Hi, this is Matt at Direct Impact Solutions, which is formerly AppWorks. So the big news, which, uh, which we talked about in our last video, is that um, Direct Impact and AppWorks have merged, and that's pretty exciting for me and for everyone at both companies. In this video, we're going to be talking about using emoji in FileMaker Pro. You're probably really familiar with using emoji on FileMaker Go and really anywhere on your uh, mobile device, especially your iPhone and your Android phone, and probably also your iPad. But you might not realize how e easy it is and how cool it is to use it on your Mac or PC as well. And of course, authoring a database in FileMaker is only done on the Mac or PC. Um, so let's talk about what you can do, how you can get that. So to start with, the emoji keyboard is activated in System Preferences on the Mac. And on Windows, there's also a keyboard shortcut. You can Google it. Basically, it's like the hitting the Windows key and then plus, and it pops up a little keyboard. On the Mac, if you just type emoji, um, it'll come up and tell you that you can access that feature in the keyboard menu. And if you go to Input Sources and then click on this little checkbox, a new uh, widget will appear in your menu, which looks like this. So I don't have access to the menu bar in this video, but I took a screenshot of it. And in the menu bar in the top right, you'll see Show Emoji and Symbols. And so if I choose that, then what will happen is it'll put it like right in context of where you're clicked. And it comes up with this choice and it'll only allow you to type one character in this mode. So if I pick a character like the heart, um, it will put it in and then it will close the box. So that's maybe not really kind of what I want. So another thing you can do is if you choose the emoji and symbol and then you click this box here, this converts it to a floating window that's in floating in front of FileMaker and also gives you this much larger palette which you can resize um, and you can also search. Actually, both of them offer searchability. So once you do that, you get a box that floats around and you can put in multiple symbols just by clicking on them. Once you've got your emoji in, um, you can resize them. And they, are, they look great in very, very large sizes, actually. Um, another interesting thing about this is if you put an emoji in, like there's the smiley face, and then you hit the undo character, um, this actually worked differently a minute ago. Um, sometimes what you'll get is you get like a black and white version of the emoji. It's sort of like a half undo, um, but I think it only works for certain emoji. Okay, so putting emoji in as a character is kind of cool. Um, being able to size it is cool. What else can you do? So it turns out that every aspect of FileMaker, everywhere that you can type text, you can type emoji. So that means if you want to rename your layout, your layout name can actually be <laughs> uh, the barf emoji and invoice details. Um, that works perfectly well, and it's going to work on all platforms uh, with, with no problems. You can also name scripts. So here's a, a script called emoji. Script steps can have emoji, and calculations can have emoji. Dialog boxes can have emoji. Default buttons can have emoji. Let's take a look at what you get when you run this script. So this one will show a dialog, and, it, and then it will actually put icons in that for, for the emoji characters, which otherwise is pretty hard to do. And that's pretty cool because there's a whole bunch of things that you have access to with emoji that you otherwise don't get. It's very odd, but you can actually name a variable or a field uh, or a table occurrence or a table or anything <laughs> as an emoji. Um, so uh, those are, you know, it's a little bit tricky because it's harder to type it, but hey, you can do it. What is maybe perhaps more useful is some layout objects that you can do. Um, so if we take a look at some options there, let's say, for example, what we really want to do is if the invoice is sent, if the invoice date is present for the sent date, then I want to show like a checkbox. Now, I could do this with a, with a button bar widget. I can just drag a button bar out, delete two segments, make it the icon type, and then choose one. Notice that these are not searchable in here, so I could scroll down to like a checkbox that kind of looks good or a star or something like that. But these are pretty limited and they're kind of hard to color and they just kind of are what they are. They are, however, um, perfectly consistent across all platforms. And one thing I should point out about emoji is emojis are um, platform specific. so. 
you may or may not know, but emojis look a little bit different on iOS versus Android. And the iOS Android match, uh, the iOS emojis perfectly match the ones on the Mac. And the Android ones, I don't know if they actually do match the ones on the PC. I think Windows probably uses a different set. So there's three different sets and they're slightly different. Okay, so let's say that I want this checkbox here and I don't want to use this button method. The easy way to do it is this. You just drag a text box out and then rather than typing characters like so, um, I can, and it made it like a uh, light color there, I can use that uh, keyboard picker again and just choose the emoji and symbol, um, use this little trick to expand it, and then I can search in here, right? So I can say check and it will show me all the ones that look like they're related to that. So you get a checkered flag, you get a check mark that's plain white, and you get this nice colored one, and then actually like a bag of money, which is pretty cool. So double click that, double click that, and then I get both things out there. And then um, put it out and then size it the way that I want. Um, so there's a keyboard shortcut I'm using here, which is uh, Command-Shift and then the greater than. And then on the Mac, that um, makes your font larger by one whole size. So when you get to the larger sizes, it's not going by individual point sizes. It's going by the next size kind of in your uh, menu. So in other words, 36, 24, 18. And then there's another keyboard shortcut that does it by single point, which is if you hold the option key. Right, so that's very large, and if I hold in the option key, this, that goes in one point increment. So a couple of little tips for you. I always like to throw those in. So if I, to continue on our little demo here, I'll put this emoji out um, and put it next to the sent on date field. And I want this to be invisible if the sent on date is empty. So this is just standard um, FileMaker uh, conditional visibility. So I go to the data tab. Um, and I go to hide object when, and I just say if is empty, uh, sent on. Sent on, which is the date field. And then uh, that would just make this, this text vid widget invisible if that is empty. Um, so if I put a date in like today, then the little emoji shows up. So that's kind of cool. That's one pretty good use of it. Um, another pretty good use is, um, and we can take a look at our data viewer here, is we can have um, a calculation that, sh that uses some sort of a case function and then can show us emoji for different states um, based on some kind of a calculation. So, um, so for example, if you click a box to do so a check, I'm gonna actually grab this one to the clipboard because this might be pretty useful. And if I say I wanted to do some sort of a check and then show a dialog or something like that, um, or I can kind of maybe go back to my script. So let's, let's just make a, a button. And I'll say check invoice. And this one can do several different things, right? So it'll um, run a new script called check invoice. And it will say um, it will run a test against some specific code and then I'll have a function in here um, that says let's say for example if the invoice date is empty if it's empty invoice date then that's a, that's a major problem right so if it's empty invoice date, then I don't want this emoji. I probably want uh, one that's more scary like this one. So I'll just copy that. Um, notice that these actually have to be in quotes here, by the way. So an, an emoji character, because it's just a regular old keyboard character, would need to be in quotes. So I could put a note like that in and say invoice date missing. Okay, and then um, what I do on a lot of these ones is uh, I'll put a return in between each thing. And so I'll say, like, if there's no invoice date, then I show that. And then if um, if not is empty, uh, the uh, sent on field. 
I already handled this with the other thing, but we're gonna just add some extra code to that. If not as empty sent on, then maybe I want the nice check mark. Um, and I'll just copy that and invoice sent. And then I could put some other errors in here as well. So for example, if they're uh, like a stop sign would be something that would be pretty major. So I'll grab that one and stick that up here. Call this one major error. And then I'll get rid of the rest of this here. Okay, so that would be three different errors that could come up just in text. Um, if a certain thing was true, but I could either, as I think about it, this actually could just be uh, a calculation directly on the layout because they're just looking at data right in the layout um, as opposed to in a script. Um, but in this case, I think I'll just use that like as a custom dialog. So I'll, I'll set my variable with that message. Um, so I'll grab that code and say set variable called error list and then show custom dialog um, errors found and then error list. There's a lot of different ways we could do this, but we're just trying to demonstrate the feature here. And then I didn't actually put any code in here yet for what that third error would be. Oh, um, that's this one called check invoice. Oh yeah, yeah, so I actually have uh, code that I didn't really double check here. So let's say that I'm looking for terms being empty. So if is empty terms. Oh, nice, I get a siren effect. That's me, not you. So if the terms are not empty, then I can show um, error. We never get sound effects on these videos we make but we do today. So, and you click that and it says, hey, invoice is sent. So if I have multiple errors, so for example, if I go in and I find one that doesn't have um, a sent on date and also doesn't have terms, then this will actually show me multiple things uh, true about it. Um, it's not though, <laughs> but probably should be. Oh yeah, error list is empty. So maybe that's just a problem with my code, which I'm not really gonna try to debug. I think you guys get the idea of how that's supposed to work. And all of you are going, oh, Matt, you totally missed this. That's You gotta fix that in your code. <laughs> but basically the idea here is this would list you multiple different errors and it's just a, a way to use emoji uh, for a display of a feature. And that's what I wanted to share. It's a definitely useful thing that we use pretty frequently. Thanks very much for your time.